Welcome to this Radial Mendelian Randomization tutorial. This tutorial introduces radial methods for performing summary MR and demonstrates how such analyses can be implemented using the Radial MRR package. For online introductions to Mendelian Randomization or to skip to specific sections of this tutorial, please click on the links in the video description below. Radial MR serves as an extension to the inverse variance weighted and MR echo regression approaches and provides two distinct advantages. First, radial methods do not require data to be recoded so that all gene exposure associations are positive. Second, radial methods help to clearly visualize outliers as well as the weight attributed to each genetic variant in the analysis. Identifying outliers is particularly valuable in summary MR, where differences in effect estimates across the range of genetic variants used is indicative of violations of the underlying MR assumptions. Identifying these differences, or heterogeneity, can greatly improve our interpretation of the results, as well as inform subsequent follow-up of specific genetic variants. To show the difficulty in identifying outliers using conventional approaches, here is a scatterplot constructed using 26 genetic variants. Gene exposure associations are plotted on the x-axis, and gene outcome associations are plotted on the y-axis. In this case, a single genetic variant, highlighted in red, is contributing a substantial amount towards overall heterogeneity, yet it's not immediately clear from the plot which observation represents the outlier. The weighting attributed to each genetic variant is also unclear. These aspects of our analysis can be more effectively highlighted by reformulating our summary MR within a radial framework. Let's start with a set of genetic variants L for which we have gene exposure association estimates gamma j and gene outcome association estimates big gamma j. For each genetic variant, we have an individual ratio estimate beta j, which we can calculate by dividing the gene outcome association by the gene exposure association. We can then arrive at our IVW estimates by calculating a weighted average of individual ratio estimates using a given weighting wj. Most commonly, inverse variance weighting is used, calculated as 1 over the squared standard error of the gene outcome association. Using this information, we can calculate Cochrane's Q statistic, which quantifies the contribution of each genetic variant towards overall heterogeneity in the analysis. The overall Q statistic represents a sum of Q statistics for each individual genetic variant used in the analyses. When estimating effects using inverse variance weighting, the individual contribution of a single genetic variant is given by the squared difference between the IVW estimate and the individual ratio estimate for that variant, multiplied by the given weighting WJ. For MR agar regression, we additionally estimate an intercept term beta 0e, and this term is included in the estimation of Rooker's Q as shown. Outliers are then identified using these Q statistics which take into account both the individual ratio estimate and weighting for each genetic variant. Fortunately, both the global Q-statistic Q and individual contribution Q-statistic QJ are chi-squared distributed, and this means that we can calculate p-values for assessing outlier status in our analyses. Returning to our previous example using 26 genetic variants, by calculating the individual contribution of each genetic variant towards global heterogeneity and plotting these values as shown on the right, we can more clearly see that the single genetic variant highlighted in red is the most substantial outlier in our analysis. And the key motivation for performing our analyses within a radial framework is we can incorporate all of these key pieces of information within a single scatter plot. So here are the underlying regression models for the radial MR approaches. For inverse variance weighting, we regress the product of the ratio estimates and squared root weightings for genetic variants upon the squared root weightings omitting an intercept. The regression coefficient that we estimate using this model, here beta, is equivalent to an IVW estimate using the conventional approach where we would regress the gene outcome associations upon the gene exposure associations with given weighting and omitting an intercept. The radial MR model 
consists of the IVW model with the addition of an intercept term beta 0 e. This intercept term is interpreted in the same way as for conventional MR regression, regression, where a non-zero intercept is indicative of directional pleiotropic effects in the analysis. The coefficient beta 1 e represents a causal effect estimate correcting for this directional pleiotropic effect. Importantly, we can see from these models that any arbitrary weighting can be used, and we're therefore not restricted to only using inverse variance weighting. Here is a scatter plot corresponding to the 26 genetic variant example we previously considered. On the x-axis, we have the square root weighting for each genetic variant, and on the y-axis, we have the product of the individual ratio estimate for each variant multiplied by its square root weighting. The IVW and MR Egger estimates are highlighted in blue and red respectively, and the slope of each regression line can be interpreted as the estimated causal effect. The outlier status for each genetic variant in relation to the IVW and MR Egger estimate is also color-coded on the right. By comparing the radial plot to the conventional summary MR scatter plot, we can see that more information is immediately available. We can see the weighting attributed to each genetic variant by looking at its place on the x-axis. And also, the x-axis will always be positive, regardless of how our alleles are coded. Perhaps more importantly, the distance of each observation from the regression line is now proportional to the square root contribution for that genetic variant towards global heterogeneity. That means that we can identify our most substantial outliers by simply considering their distance from a given regression line. So now that we've covered radial MR approaches, let's see how these methods can be implemented within the R statistics environment. To do this, we'll be using the radial MR R package, as well as R version 3.6 and R Studio version 1.2. Links to these resources are provided in the video description below. OK, so let's get started using the radial MRR package. To begin, we can see that we're using R version 3.6 within R Studio version 1.2. And from here, we want to go to Google and type in WSpiller GitHub. From here, we can click on the link MR Practicals. And this will take us to the GitHub repository where all the practical materials are hosted. From here, we can scroll down until we see installation, and we can see each block of code that we'll need to copy into our R console to install the necessary packages for this tutorial. Let's return once all these packages have been installed. So now that all the packages have been installed, we can run the command library MR Practicals to load all our materials, and then type vignette in quotations radial MR to bring up an embedded R markdown document with all the steps that we'll be using in this tutorial. This document begins with an overview of the radial MR package, as well as installation instructions for installing the package on its own without additional tutorial materials. Next, we have the radial MR workflow, which begins with obtaining summary data estimates either independently or through MR base. For more information on using MR base, please click on the links in the description below. Once we have our information, we will format the data using the format underscore radial function. Once this is complete, we can obtain an IVW estimate by using the function IVW underscore radial. Next, we can fit a radial MR EGA model using the function EGA underscore radial. And then finally, we can plot the data using either the plot underscore radial function or the plotly underscore radial function. In this tutorial, we're going to use pre-existing data obtained from the MR Base online platform. This has already been saved as part of the MR Practicals R package as BMI DAT. And if we type in names BMI DAT, we can see all the column names for this example dataset. To estimate causal effects using radial MR, we need the gene exposure associations, the gene outcome associations, corresponding standard errors, and in genetic variant ID numbers if these are known. We can create a new object in R, radial underscore data, which will use the format underscore radial function to define a data frame with each of these necessary pieces of information. It's important to note that the ordering of these variables is important. So when we use the format underscore radial function, 
we'll first want to input the gene exposure associations, then the gene outcome associations, then the standard errors for the gene exposure associations, followed by the standard errors for the gene outcome associations, and then finally the genetic variant ID numbers if known. Once this is done, we can press enter, and we'll see we have a new data frame defined with each of the column names that we need for our analyses. This completes the first step of our radial MR analysis. So next, we'll use the IVW underscore radial function to fit an inverse variance weighted model using the radial framework. To do this, we're going to specify three different options. The first option is weighting, whether we want to use first order, that is inverse variance weights, second order weights, or modified second order weights. Each of these weightings has different characteristics with respect to estimating heterogeneity in an analysis, and further information can be found in the paper given below. Next, we want to specify a p-value threshold for identifying outliers using their contribution to overall heterogeneity. By default, this is set to 0.05, though you may want to adjust this if you want to take into account multiple testing in your analysis. The final option specifies an iteration tolerance for applying the iterative radial IVW model. By default, this is set to 0.0001, and more information on this approach can be found in the paper given below. So now let's fit our radial IVW model. To do this, we'll use the function IVW underscore radial and put as the first object our formatted data frame using the format underscore radial function. Next, we'll specify our p-value for identifying genetic variants as outliers. In this case, we're performing a multiple testing correction by dividing 0.05 by the number of variants used in our analysis. Next, we specify the weighting. In this case, we're choosing option 3, which relates to modified second order weights. And then finally, we're going to specify our iteration tolerance, which is the default value of 0 0.0001. So now we can estimate our causal effects by running the IVW underscore radial command, and we'll be given a summary of each of the causal effect estimates using each method of IVW. The first row is our IVW estimate using our specified weighting, in this case, modified second order weights. The second row shows the results of the iterative approach. The final two results give estimates that are used by minimizing the Q statistic for heterogeneity across the sample. Considering heterogeneity in our estimates, the global Q statistic for heterogeneity, that is Cochrane's Q, is 290.81, with a very small p-value. This can be interpreted as there being substantial heterogeneity in our analysis and potential violation of the MR assumptions by one or more genetic variants. Further, we can also see that outliers have been detected. To obtain a data frame of genetic variants identified as outliers, we can run the command ivw.model outliers. In this data frame, we have the genetic variant ID for each outlier, its individual Q statistic and contribution to global heterogeneity, as well as the corresponding p-value. A full list and description of all available elements that can be extracted from the IVW underscore radial function can be found by typing question mark IVW underscore radial. So now that we've identified several outliers, the next step is to assess whether directional pleiotropia is a problem by fitting a radial MR EGR model. To do this, we'll use the EGR underscore radial function, which takes a similar form to the IVW underscore radial function. First, we'll specify radial underscore data, which is our formatted data frame, and then apply our p-value threshold for detecting outliers, in this case, applying a multiple testing correction by dividing 0 0.05 by the number of variants in our analysis. And then finally, we'll specify the weighting by using option three for modified second order weights. Fitting the radial MR EGR model 
we obtain two different estimates. The first estimate shows the radial MR Egger intercept, which is interpreted in much the same way as the conventional MR Egger intercept. A non-zero intercept is considered evidence of a directional pleiotropic effect. The p-value in using the radial MR Egger method should correspond to the conventional MR Egger method using comparable weights. However, it should be noted that the point estimate is likely to be different between the two models. This is because in the conventional MR Egger regression setting, the y-axis is on the gene outcome association, whereas for radial MR Egger, the y-axis is going to be the ratio estimate for each genetic variant multiplied by its square root weighting. The second estimate we obtain is a corrected causal effect estimate taking into account directional pleiotropy. This corrected causal effect estimate, along with the corresponding p-value, should be comparable to an MR Egger model using comparable weights. Finally, we obtain a Q-statistic for global heterogeneity, in this case Rooker's Q. Here it's 291.45, and the p-value relating to this Q-statistic is very small. We can also see that outliers have been detected in our analysis. As was the case in fitting our IVW radial model, we can obtain a data frame with a list of the outliers detected using MR Egger by running egger.model dollar sign outliers. And here we obtain a genetic variant ID, the corresponding contribution to Rooker's Q, and the p-value for each genetic variant. Now that we have obtained our estimates of causal effect, the final step is to visualize these results. To do that, we'll be using the plot underscore radial function, which takes our results from either the IVW underscore radial function, Egger underscore radial function, or both combined, along with several additional options to produce our radial plots. The first option indicates whether a reference scale should be presented on the radial plot. As the radial plot projects onto a circle, this will take the form of a black curve with reference points. The second option indicates whether only outliers should be shown on the plot. When this option is selected and radial underscore scale is set to false, the square root Q statistic for each genetic variant will be shown on the plot. The final option, scale underscore match, determines whether the Y axis and the X axis should be presented on the same scale. This can improve the presentation of plots in some cases. So if we look at this first plot here, we can see we have a black reference scale. Our outliers are color-coded, as is by default, and we're showing all of the genetic variants, as we can see here. Each dashed line represents the ratio estimate for each genetic variant individually. If we scroll down, we can see that in this case, we've set it to that only outliers are shown, and we can see the individual square root Q statistic for each genetic variant. Remember that the higher this value, the greater its contribution to overall heterogeneity, and the greater the extent to which it is an outlier. If we want to visualize our radial MR Egger models, we can use the same function including egger.model, our estimated effects using our radial MR Egger model, and the same functions here for whether we want to have the radial scale shown, whether we want to show outliers, and whether we want to match the scale. We can display both MR Egger and IVW estimates by using C brackets IVW.model, comma, egger.model. In this case, the ordering is important, so we'll always want to make sure that our IVW estimates are positioned first, followed by the MR Egger estimates. And then the same functions as we've discussed can be used to edit your plot. And then finally, if we want to visualize our IVW estimates using an interactive plot, we can use the plotly underscore radial function input our estimated IVW results, so our IVW.model object in this case. And here, 
we'll be presented with a plot where we can hover over each point and see the genetic variant ID number for that variant. This concludes our tutorial using the radial MRR package. The materials and software presented in this tutorial have been developed by the University of Bristol MRC Integrative Epidemiology Unit and have been funded by the Wellcome Trust. For more information on ongoing projects and opportunities within the IEU, please click on the links in the video description below.